Assalamualaikum and hi and welcome to another episode of uh, Barbara Junction. My name is Azmi, your host. Today with me is Clarissa from BroLab. Hey guys. And uh, we're going to talk about BroLab. <laughs> but before we, we do that, um, please do go to our YouTube channel. That's Zilfit TV. Subscribe to it and don't forget to click the like button. Also, we are available on Spotify. And on another note, we also need sponsors for this show. <laughs> so if you like to, uh, if you like us to showcase your products or your brand, you are welcome to come on and, you know, cash sponsorship or anything, we'll accept it. So without further ado, you're listening to Barbell Junction, Malaysia's first strength and fitness podcast, brought to you by Zulfit Malaysia. The distributor of Elico Strength Equipment. Okay, and uh, welcome, Clarissa. Hi, Azmir. Thanks for having me here today. Hey, thank you for coming. Even though it's a bit late. <laughs> yeah, so I left my phone just, at home. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Do you remember the first time we met? Uh? Um, I think so. I think it was in one of the Olympic weightlifting um, was it now? Yeah. You mean in? Uh, I think in Vanguard. Vanguard. Yeah. Right. I believe. W- were you selling insurance back then? Um. Was it ins- insurance? I think I was, but not anymore. Like I. How come? I, I thought insurance is very luc- lucrative. It is for people who are able to, but I don't think I'm able. It it takes a, a certain kind of uh, yes a person to actually um, sell insurance. I, right? I I think it's more like a skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more like people skills and the ability to, you know, convince them and, you know, just just be in contact with them and all. Like for me it's different. When you tell me no, I'll just I'll just I'll just leave you alone. I'll tell yeah. you it's okay. Was was it that um so after after you've um done with insurance? Mm-hmm. Uh what, what did you do? Did you uh, took another job or Um after insurance I actually went to teach kids. Like what in kindergarten? No, no. Um, I was always a PT then. Mm-hmm. I was always in the fitness industry. Um, but then I realized that, you know, there's a lot of people teaching adults. Mm. But what about kids? Right. So then I ventured into kids, and then from there it started growing and growing, and then I went into teaching kids gymnastics. Even though I, even though I wasn't a gymnast. Mm. Um, how did you do that? <laughs> um, I guess. One thing led to another. It went over really, really quick. Um, one recommendation to the other, and then everything just happened. But how, how would you know how to teach gymnastics? So we have set gymnasts in the company. Uh. So they teach you how to spot the kids. Um, and the kids are young. Right. So you so show you them just the very basic skills. Right. You teach them how to roll. They've got equipments to right. go down and all those kind of things. And you're talking about... Uh, not bro lab at this point of time. It's no, not bro lab yet. Um, it's the little gym. Ah, sure. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. It's okay, a child okay. development center. Right, right, right. I think I've sent my kids once or twice to a, a, a similar, similar. Est- establishment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, what was your background actually? Um, it, funny it, you would ask. Yeah. Um, I actually did PR. PR is in public relations. Public relations okay. and broadcasting. Hey, yeah, yeah, how am yeah. I doing? <laughs> You're doing awesome. <laughs> very, very awesome. Yeah, so I did PR and broadcasting, but I just realized that it, it's not for me. Well, why not? Uh, how many years did you spend studying uh, PR and broadcasting? Um, I did a three-year degree. So, yeah, that's a degree. Yeah, I did yeah. a three-year degree. And then in our final year project, I realized that, oh my goodness. In the final year? Yep, in my <laughs> final year, I realized, oh my goodness, this is not for me. So I completed the degree and I was like, you know what? I'll save this as my backup plan in case anything right. ever happens. So then I went into marketing for a hospital. A- as in an actual job? Yes, okay. correct, a corporate mm. job. And then, I, and then I went into there for about a year. Mm. So that's when I realized corporate is just not for me. I need to keep moving. So I was always a very, very active as, as a child growing right. up. And then, P, and then PT was always in, you know, in, in the line of teaching and, and you know, just basically educating people about, right. you know, the importance of fitness and all those kind of things as well. And then it was during that time when I found out I had slipped disc just a couple of oh. years back. 
Uh, so I was having really nagging pains in my mm. back because mm. I, w- I was always very active. So I thought pain is just normal. Mm-hmm. But apparently it was not because it was really, really bad to a point that I couldn't even stop. I couldn't even continue walking for more than 15 minutes without feeling pain. So that's pains. pretty bad. Yeah, it was really, really bad. Um, so basically my L4, L5, S1, right, the disc was actually touching onto the nerves. Mm. So I was having like... It's not sciatica, right? I had sciatica. Okay. And then I couldn't walk for um, more than just 10 to 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then... You yeah, could so swat the fly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then I went to see a doctor and then the doctor told me, oh, you cannot do anything for the rest of your life. You've got to slip this. That's what normally what doctors would say, right? I mean, we had an episode about this, mm-hmm. talking about how doctors are always advising us to not do anything physical once we get injured. Yeah. Right, which is kind of weird. Um, it's not exactly weird. It's because... Maybe it's because they do not want you to go back to feeling that pain again. Right. Right. But that's when I guess the physio comes into play. Mm -hmm. Like the physio, that's when the physio educates you about, you know, how you strengthen your muscles, Mm -hmm. how you prevent these things from relapsing and all those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. So So did you manage to get it like fixed or is it still there? Um, So I did physio for six months and then I was pain free ever since. Mm -hmm. And then I got introduced to lifting weights. I was actually very skeptical about it because I was, again, I was made to believe by the doctor and then my family made me believe that I couldn't, you know, do anything else except walk slowly. Right. So lifting heavy, even lifting, you know, the, the bag of toilet roll right. in the supermarket, yeah. my mom would be like, no, 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 no. That's too heavy. Your back, you've got a yeah. back problem. Mm. So, so then when I was being introduced to the gym, I was like, no, I cannot. Mm. I cannot lift heavy. Right. So why should I go to the gym? And then that's when proper education about movement, the importance of movement mm. and bracing and all those kind of things come into play. So then I, when, once I started, I was like, hey, I don't feel so bad after all. Mm. Maybe this is what I could do to educate like, people about right. it. Right. Yeah. And uh, do you still feel any back pain right now? Um, not exactly. Um, probably from not bracing hard enough or the lack of training mm. once in a while, but nothing very major actually. Right. Yeah. And w- w- when exactly did you did you start doing the PT work? Like, did you take any certification or where did you learn uh, how to do PT? Um, PT, so I first started off by, because my boyfriend Matthew is a, is a PT mm. as well. Um, he did it and I was like, hey, I can do this as well. So I, I have not gone for any like proper Certification. certifications or mm. whatever, but I've read the books and all right. and, and then constantly like learning from all the people around mm-hmm. me and reading and all those mm. kind of things. But PT certification is definitely like on the top of my list. Right. Yeah. So what, do you, th- what, wait, what do you think? Uh, um, do you think that you need a certification to call yourself a PT? Uh, what was your opinion on that? Um, when I first started, I guess... Anybody can be a PT, mm-hmm. you know, but whether or not you're good in, I mean, not exactly good enough, whether or not, because nobody actually wants to harm anybody else. Right. Right. A lot of people think that in the PT industry, there's really, really good money. Mm-hmm. Is it? It's true. It's true? In a way, it's true. Really? But there are a group of people who... Bro, let's be too much. Uh, <laughs> not to say that. Yeah. So... It's true in a sense, depending on how much you charge as well. Right. Depending on how much you value yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you know that you're more knowledgeable and you know that you're able to help certain types of people, like maybe injured people. Right. Then definitely, by all means, you, you charge more, mm. but people have to realize the value of the value that you're giving back to them. Right. It's always the value that you give back to your clients. Correct. Right? Correct. So um, what my boyfriend likes to say is um, willing buyer, willing seller. That's true. Yeah. So if somebody's willing to pay this much, right, they definitely want to expect a certain expectation of how much right. they're paying for. As compared to paying you a small amount, right, sometimes they might not expect as high yeah. because yeah. they're just not paying as much. Right. Yeah. I find that um, uh, if, you, if you charge too low, mm-hmm. you are just saying something about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> So right. in a way, you're undervaluing yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's not good as a business in the long term. Mm-hmm. I, I I understand that sometimes you have to start somewhere. Yeah. But again, I think like you said, you have to know your worth. Yeah. And what you can, uh, what the kind of value that you can provide to mm-hmm. your 
uh, clients, right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so when was when, when did this start? Like, um, how many years ago? Mm, let's see, maybe about three and a half years ago. Yeah, once okay. I start, once I um, well, left you, uni. I, hey, wait a minute. When I met you, you were not in uni, right? No. Vanguard was no, probably no. in 2016. Yeah, I was I was fresh out of uni then. Really? Yeah. Kind of fresh. <sighs> You're so young. Yeah. Huh? Turning 26. Wow. So young. <laughs> and and at that time I I thought um you would you you were already doing some weights already, right? Yes. So I've always been I started off lifting in uni. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I had a base of about two Two-ish years just mm. to get the movements right and all, because lifting was a totally new sport to right. me. Like and lifting, when you're talking about lifting, you're talking about weight lifting, right? Uh, no, I oh. actually started oh. off doing uh, power bodybuilding. I think that's what they call it. Power building. Yeah. So right, like I, I, I've never understood that concept. I guess it's, I, I guess it's a combination between powerlifting and bodybuilding. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I did like the bench, the squats, Squat and the deadlift, deadlift. Mm. and then I did you know just. Bodybuilding stuff just to look better right. and yeah. And then uh, when did you start weightlifting? Oh, did you, did you did you go into CrossFit or you just jump to no, uh, straight went, to? No, I went. I went straight to weightlifting um, only because I wasn't too much of a fan of you know the fast movements, the very competitive pace. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like cardio back then. Nobody does. <laughs> yeah, but funny you should say because I grew up as a runner in school. What really? Yeah, yeah. So. Never ever long distance, but mm. always just a short sprint. S- sprints, yeah, yeah. Sprints are different. Yeah. So, yeah. if you're to tell me to keep going for maybe forty-five minutes, thirty minutes, twenty minutes, maybe that's my max. Right. But to keep my heart rate constantly up at a certain level, right? That's just not for me. Like I don't yeah, like feeling here. out of breath. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, it feels, feels like I mean I don't know, but it feels like dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I I mean I do watts once in a while. You know, just to keep that cardiovascular um, level up. Right. You know, like at par with like all the members and all, but just not too often. But so so right now you you're doing more of what? Um, is it more functional? Is it movement? Is it strength training? Is uh, it? Um, we call it like it's an umbrella term. It's called functional bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what we're focusing on right now. But I'm actually competing in Vanguard. Okay, but yeah. so you do, you still do uh, weightlifting? Yes, I do once in a while. Um, usually, when there's a competition coming up, then mm. I'll prep. There's only one competition for weightlifting e- in Malaysia. Yeah, so <laughs> we went to Singapore beginning of this year. Uh, were you there? Yeah, I was there. I can't remember seeing you. Was Matt there? Yes, Matt was there as well. Ah, I can't remember. Hmm. Yeah, so. Getting old. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, so only when there's competition prep. That's when I focus more on weightlifting. Okay. Yeah. If not, then we'll just do functional bodybuilding. Right. Um, moving right. You know. I guess it's all about moving right nowadays. Uh, are you? Uh, have you taken the? I don't know what they call it. Animal class or something like that, where you, you, you move, mm-hmm. but you move like. The animal flow an, one, right? Yeah, animal flow. Ah, uh, what's that called again? Animal flow. <laughs> no, I. I th- th- is, is there's like else? a term for that. I cannot remember what it's called. Um, but is, is that the kind of movement movements that you're you're talking about, or is it something? Not really. Different? It's it's very based on like, in a way, power body, power power building as well. Like right. The squats, the bench, the deadlifts. Okay. But um, it's just you know engaging the right muscles. Mm. You know, being aware of what muscles are are going, um, being aware of how you're moving. Like for example, the feet. Mm. Right. The feet plays a very very important role in mm-hmm. in everything else. Right, but we tend to forget about the feet most of the time. Mm. Correct, like just how we grip the ground, how mm. we walk, mm-hmm. how we run, how we jump, and all those kind of things. Right. So that's what um, I'm trying to achieve as well. Because mm-hmm. as kids, nobody actually taught us how to the run, how just, to walk, how to jump. It just comes naturally, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mommy and daddy will be like, "Oh, she's running, yeah. great. Oh, uh, two feet take off, how to jump, and all those kind of things." But nobody actually teaches us how to like you know jump. Properly up. move. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to reteach mm. as well to myself, um, just so that we can, you know, um, just raise the awareness towards movement towards what, all what's our members the, what's as well. The, what was the goal for for this? Um, was it what, what do you call it? Power movement, power building movement, power movement building. In a way, functional, the functional, body functional bodybuilding. Yep. 
But it's still bodybuilding in there. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um. Never mind. We'll, we'll talk about this in, in depth uh, later on. Mm-hmm. So when when exactly did you start um, knowing bro lab? I would say about three years ago when Same I wanted. Same time you met. <laughs> yep. When I wanted to go into Olympic weightlifting. Okay. Yeah, because that mm. time Matt was doing Olympic weightlifting, and I was right, like, right, "Hey, him, yeah. can mm-hmm. you teach me?" Mm. So, I guess when you have like your boyfriend teach you something, right? That's super technical. Mm-hmm. There's not as much. There's not as much like patience, you know. Like the patience from your boyfriend's part. I guess both of us. Yeah. Yeah. So then, I was like, "Why can't you teach me?" You know, like he gets kind of frustrated because I couldn't understand the cue sometimes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very good at hand-eye coordination, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, y- you know, you know, uh, even with my kids, mm-hmm. I can't teach them. Yeah, because there's a certain expectation yeah, that you have towards exactly. them. Exactly, yeah. I think it's the same w- with uh, Matt and yourself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it is easy, it's easier to teach other other people Correct. than it is to teach someone who is close to you. Yes. That, in my opinion. Yeah, I understand that. Like even even like my family members, when I teach them something, right? If they don't get it on the, the second or third try, mm. and I'm like, why can't you just get it? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> and then when I take a step back and then I teach my members how to do it, I teach my clients how to do it. Yeah. You have more patience, right? Yes, exactly. I have no idea why that is, but maybe it's expectations. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So then um, it was then like Matt found Brolab as well. Mm. He founded Brolab as well? Or he found? He found Brolab. Okay. Yeah, he discovered Brolab. He discovered, yeah. That was Sorry, my England is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, so... That's when he discovered Brolab. Right. And then he went for a couple of sessions and I was like, hey, this is really great. Why don't you try it out? Maybe he can, maybe Jillian can teach you. Right. Yeah. So then I went a couple of times and then I managed. Right. Yeah. So I felt very accomplished, definitely, because, you know, it's I not tried. easy. Yeah. It's definitely not it's easy. It's not at easy. All. Yeah. yeah. Because it's so technical, like, you know, right. from if the pool to like the lockout yes, to yeah. everything else. Yeah. I would say even more so than powerlifting. Yes, definitely, and, and every uh, kg sorry. matters. Yeah, and it, it's I found I, I find it a bit um, strange, mm-hmm. right? Because you stay you start you started out as like uh, you know uh, doing powerlifting type of workouts, yeah, and then you know you move towards more movements and then also uh, weightlifting. Actually, it was weightlifting and then movements. Okay, so yeah. movement came. Okay, yeah. fine. Movement is later. But <laughs> the, the, the thing is, for for me at least, when I were when I was working out. F- few years back, right? Uh-huh. Um, it was I tried doing CrossFit. Okay. Right, just at home, you know, few kettlebells and whatever, mm-hmm. um, like barbells that I had. Yeah. Um, and then the pain of the, you know, your heart rate, you know, beating yeah, yeah. up so fast. Um, it was it was just wasn't for me. <laughs> I lost weight, which which was good, but I I just. <laughs> I, I don't know how these CrossFitters uh, do yeah. it seriously. Yeah, uh, really I salute have, them. Yes. Yeah, I have I have a mad respect for them, but it wasn't just for, it wasn't for me. So, but I I sort of I would say fell in love with uh, weightlifting. Right, mm-hmm. that's the natural progression. Yes, because weightlifting is is kind of like um, for me. I always uh, make an analogy like it's golfing. Okay. Like you you can never or at least I could never get the right swing. You know when you have the right swing, there's a certain swoosh. Yes, definitely. Right? Yeah, the so technique. Yeah, the it. technique, right? So for 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 me, weightlifting was like getting that swoosh, and I couldn't get it. Yep. So it was it was it was kind of fun, but after a while, <laughs> the training got so hard, <laughs> right? I mean, if you really really follow the training of uh, weightlifting, mm-hmm. I think it's really really hard. Yep. It's it's, re- it's actually also s- some form of cardio workout because you do four sets of hand cleans for ever, uh, mm-hmm. for example, eighty like percent of the weight. Yeah. That's not. There's no joke, man. It's, it's li- it really, really um, bumps up your, your heart rate, right? So after that, I said, nah, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> go back to bodybuilding. No, I, go, I went back to, I, I went to powerlifting. Okay. Because I did the 5x5, five five, which is, you know, it's just bench, squat. You don't get really out of breath doing those stuff. You it know? depends uh, on how heavy the weight is as well. Like it was heavy enough, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you don't get that kind of... Um, uh, uh, Elevated pump, heart rate. Pump, yeah, yeah. So when you said you went powerlifting to weightlifting, it's like, oh, okay. I guess it's because of the satisfaction that you do that you that you yeah. get from it. Like, wh- you know, when when you bring in the bar, right. that pull, when you're doing it right, you will know it's right. Yeah. Because the feeling is just, oh, the bar just flies. I still don't know that feeling. <laughs> 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 I'm doing it not right now. So like, um, 
we recently have um, uh, have a coach okay. uh, alam uh, he was uh, an an ex wheelchair persecutoran mm-hmm. uh, lifter yeah so he come he works here at um, after six and mm-hmm. uh, we have a class every wednesday right okay so him being here i felt like mm, a sudden you know search of motivation yeah, to start yeah. it back again and after all i have eleco here right mm-hmm. and so uh, why not right? yeah i mean why not right so okay lah, so i started again uh, like a couple of weeks ago, uh, ago. but and, and it's, it's still fun okay. i still find it really yeah. really enjoyable but is there a but to it the, the, it's still painful <laughs> but i think i know how to Uh, manage myself better okay you know i mean uh, i'm not young anymore yep. so i think uh, like yesterday i did like uh, snatch cleans and it was like some f- multiple reps mm-hmm. you know and i follow this program i got off a book okay it, it's not meant for 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 anyone it's, it's for master's class you know uh-huh. master's as in not age yeah but as in level okay you know like the but athlete I, level and all that. yeah so I, i took it just because um uh it's easy on paper if if if, if there's a book uh, by Bob Takano I don't know what you've heard of it before mm-hmm. um, this guy has uh, different different programs for different different levels of yep. athletes yep, right yep. so if you're a beginner you have to do a lot more uh, different variations of uh, workouts mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily the, the 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 main ones like the clean and jerks and things like that but there's a lot more the build up yeah. to lead up yeah. to the so yes. yeah so and I didn't want to do all that okay <laughs> so I wanted to do just the masters one which is very simple because they break it up to uh, am and pm okay right so that means uh, you i just train once a day lah who's who's going to do twice a day right <laughs> so i just take the am one day and i take the pm another day so okay. it's easy yeah. easy in that sense you know but it, it was yeah it seemed easy lah it, it seems easy but then again you know even uh, i don't know my my cns was just fired up and uh, now my elbow hurts And as you age, you you kind of know that you know you gotta take it easy. Was it you because know? you haven't been training for a while? Or? Um, no, I've I've been trying to move. Um, I think probably the last two and a half or three months. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the 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 weighing scale is I don't know. It's, it's just keep growing. It just keeps moving to the right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not going down. I tell you, left or right, I can't remember. Right. So uh, it's it's frustrating uh, because. Um, I, I'm sure you'll fix this one, uh, one day lah, yep. especially with your back. You know, I'm, I'm not too sure. But if you say you fix your back, then okay, I say okay. alhamdulillah. But I, I used to um, when I did when I went to the gym when I was in my 20s, right? Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say I had a sleep disc because I have never got it checked. Yeah. Um, but it was one of those times when you, when I squatted and uh, you felt something off. Yeah. With your back. Yeah. And it was like, oh my god! So it's, it was so it, it's, it was excruciating, and I couldn't even sit or get out of the car without feeling any pain, you know. Yeah. But that pain, that that pain, uh, 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 went away after a while. Okay. But I I noticed that in my 30s, um, my back uh, was giving me a lot of problems. So I I can't stand like let's say for more than 20 minutes or things like that. and then before my back starts to hurt mm-hmm. and I, I feel uh, like I don't know it's numb, numbness or something like that you know so I don't know whether that's going to haunt you back once as you grow older. Have you older got like la. sciatica and all? I, I I didn't get it checked so I I don't know. Okay. Um, I I'm just living with it lah. So I, and <clears throat> so then as you get what was the question you asked just now? <laughs> I can't even remember what. What you were, you <laughs> were talking about, but as you go, as you get older, it's it's very difficult. Uh, it you f- you find that your body you know deteriorates, um, but yeah, but that's uh, you know probably a cautionary tale for every one of you out there who's listening and also watching. Anyway, well, let's Are go you know back. More about us, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, we'll we'll take a break right now and we'll come back and talk more about bro. Lab, bro I promise. All yeah. right. All righty. Uh, welcome back to Barbell Junction uh, with me and also Clarissa from Bro Lab. Okay, we went off tangent a bit, mm-hmm. so let's get back <laughs> on track. So <laughs> you were talking about how you discovered uh, Bro Lab, yep. um, and you were talking, you were saying that uh, your boyfriend uh, uh, didn't want to teach you. Yeah, he <laughs> so tried. He tried. <laughs> he tried like right. I got to give him credit for yeah. trying, but. And uh, so he pointed you to Julian. Yes. In Bro Lab. Yeah. Um, so then. Yep. Um, back then, Brolab was just this, like you know, this, this small space where people get in together, um, people with similar interests, right. you know, like learning how to learning how just 
trying to like perfect the technique and all. Strictly weightlifting though. Yes. Um. Actually, not really. Um. We were weightlifting based. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people would come in and say, "Hey, I, I I like to learn how to fix my squat." Oh you know? yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, that, just, that's just part. That's, yeah. That's part yeah, of weightlifting, yeah, right? Yeah. So like we'll get get in together maybe on the weekends just to work out once a week, mm-hmm. and then I went on like an online programming with Julian, and then we became like good friends. You know, basically the whole bro lab community became like mm-hmm. you know like a whole family that kind of thing. When 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 you when you first met them, mm-hmm. uh, how many people were that in bro lab? Um, in that space. It really depends. I think if I'm not mistaken, there used to be like three classes in the morning. They had classes. Yeah, in a way, like just lifting classes and all. But you're talking about this bro lab where they they base themselves in a kilang <laughs> factory. Yes, in a factory right. lot. Yes. Yeah. So Julian basically just took out the space in in you know the warehouse uh-huh. and then put a put one or two platforms. Right. A couple of barbells, some weights. Right. And then said, Hey, you guys want to come? You guys want to learn? Feel free to come. Yeah. So that's, it, that's but he actually I had a uh, classes, a reg- re- regular weekly classes. Not exactly weekly, but most of the weeks, I would say. Yeah. So right. he will post up on the board. Um, hey, today this is gonna be the sessions. I see. So if you want to come, like he will maximize it to I think maybe four or five in a class. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So that's basically how he started. Like he just he was just. Teaching us, you know, the techniques of mm. weightlifting and mm. all those kind mm. of things. Mm. Yeah, and then slowly, slowly we grew. We kind of like outgrew the space because right. everybody was like, "Hey, come on, let's go to bro lab." Right. Yeah. So then we started having like fun in the sun workouts over the weekends. Yeah. Wait, then but friends but started inviting friends. But people who who go to to these sessions, these mm-hmm. weekly sessions, mm-hmm. uh, they they come and they do it for free, or is it something that um, you know you got to pay for it? Um, it started off as. Pay as you like, you know. However, like you that. value the class S. I like that concept, though. Yeah. However, you value the class mm. S. Um, if you feel like it's a good class and you know you want to pay a big amount, mm-hmm. that's up to you. Right. Like it was always anonymous. Like there was always this tong. Mm, the tabong right? lah. Yes, mm. and then you just put your money inside. Right. Yeah. How much you put? Uh, when I went, um, that was like over already. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they started charging like a specific amount. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, how much did they charge? Is that something that you can share? Uh, I actually cannot really remember how much I paid. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't really. It, it w- really remember. It, do you remember whether it's uh, expensive or expensive for a twenty-three-year-old? I think it was pretty affordable. Affordable. Yeah, okay. it was very very affordable for. Oh, it's in a factory, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at Sunway Damansara. Yeah. Not, yeah. not exactly a factory, but Sunway like a Damas- warehouse. Sunway Damansara is in Kota Damansara. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. You know yeah. where Bean Brothers is. Bean Brothers. The coffee shop. No, I don't the drink cafe. coffee. I don't drink coffee, so okay. I wouldn't know. Yeah, it's just one lorong before. Is it near the Strand, right? Yes, so it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. It's very near the Strand. And then, um, w- where did you guys go after that? Um, we were there for about three years, mm-hmm. I think. Right. Four years actually. Like, um, I started off about I think six or six to eight months after they opened up. Right. After Julian started lah. Mm. So then. Once we went there, we were there for quite a while. Mm-hmm. So we moved from like a small space to like a bigger space inside. It, it, okay, okay, in the same yeah. factory. Yes, correct, in the same space. Mm-hmm. And then people just started coming more often. Like more people were aware of Bro Lab as a space. Right. Right, as like a community. The family grew bigger, and then we kind of like outgrew the space. Right. Yeah. How many people are we talking about by this time? Um. At that time when it went really big, like I, I hardly went because I was always working on the weekends. But I think on some days you can fetch up to like fifteen, twenty people in a small space. Yeah. That's quite good. Yeah, that's quite good. It was really good. So then, in a way, I guess we kind of outgrew the space, and then we just needed to expand a little bit more. And is that when you guys um, decided to move, move to the current location, or did you move to somewhere else first? No, um, it was always from that factory, and then we moved the whole thing over to like our current location right. at um, Jalan Lira near Subang Airport. Right. Do you? I I think I know the. I've never been there, mm-hmm. but I think I know where it is. Okay. Um, uh, just because I scouted that place before I got this one. Ah, all right. Right. It's pretty. 
I wouldn't say it's far in, but it's not accessible. But at the time, at the point of time, okay. it was not as accessible. You have to go through a lorong, right? Yes, you still and have to go through that lorong. And the tall grasses. Um, side, not so much tall grasses anymore. There's so there's two houses. ways to actually go in. There's yeah. like a smaller ah, road. I didn't know that. There's a smaller road yeah. and there's a bigger road now. So the smaller road is just a one. It's a one lane. Yeah, 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 like yeah. One yeah. car masuk means you have to go. That, yeah, to the side. I took that one. I yeah. didn't know there was another entrance. There's another entrance now. So this one goes direct. Is so it this new? one fits. I'm not sure if it's new because I've never been to the place prior to when we opened. Right. So the only time I went to this space was I think about two months before we opened. Right. Yeah. And and this new new entryway. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait, wait. The 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 location of of um the compound mm-hmm. is a comp is like a private compound, right? Yes. There's like the guard house and yeah. everything. Yeah. So I remember because I went at night, so I, I I didn't see any any other entry entryway. Okay. So I went through that lorong uh-huh. and it kind of freaked me out a bit like because at night it's yeah. dark and yeah. you, sort of stray dogs uh, <laughs> left and right. And we we wanted to enter the the place and the the guard stopped us and you know we we can't we can uh, uh, go in yeah and and at, at at that time this this was probably about a year and a year and a half ago mm-hmm. at that time uh, I couldn't see a lot of companies being set up there is, uh, are there more companies now yes definitely so I would say that maybe. 70 to 80% percent right. of all the buildings yeah. there are filled up now. Yeah. yeah, so that's good. That's good. But yeah. when I when I was there, it was uh, it was kind of empty. I think it was just about one or two two or three companies over there. So anyway, so the comp the compound is like a cul de sac, mm-hmm. right? So I I I really didn't see any other way in. Uh, they must have built something. Probably because they're actually building a highway outside. Ah. Uh. Yeah, the dash highway. Right. That connects um, Damansara. I'm not. Not too sure what like dash stands for, but there's a highway coming up in the next two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then, so this road is slightly bigger now. Right. That's like the main road that most people take. Okay. Yeah, it fits two cars, but there's a lot of potholes because there's a lot of like construction. Lorries, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes through, yeah. And and when did you guys um well you guys moved in quite recently, right? I think I believe in the mid of this year. Yes. So we officially opened in July. Right. And before that. I mean, who decided on this location? I mean, where else did you guys scout? Uh, I'm not too sure actually, but I know that Julian likes the space because of how it looks like. It's pretty. Yeah, it's so I l- beautiful. I loved it. Yeah, everybody loves it. Yeah, like it's just for my if my first experience that <laughs> just threw me off, and then, you know, of course the rental was a bit high for for my you know. Yeah. So budget. so a lot of feedback that we get from our members when they first came is that, oh, I feel like I'm driving to nowhere. But yeah. once I get into it, and then I realize, oh, it's actually a really beautiful space. It is. It yeah. is really, and I, I think you guys did a really good job in terms of um, decorating or mm-hmm. you know, you know, fixing up Setting the place. Up it's, yeah, it's, it's very very nice, um, and it takes really you you can take really good pictures. Yes, anywhere. and the lighting yeah, as well yeah, there's because there's so glass. much glass. Yeah, yeah. Man, I loved it, man. We could have been neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so and. Uh, I'm assuming now that the family has gone bigger, mm-hmm. and uh, you guys have your own space. Yeah. Now it's everything has has to be more structured, right? Yes, definitely. And like in the business as well. Yeah. yeah. So who's running Brolab now? Um. So there's Julian. There's another coach named Dunyu, mm-hmm. and then there's ah, he's me. back. Yes. Okay. So that's the three of us. We are currently like you know, r- doing basically almost anything and everything. Right. Our team is still really really small. Correct. Yeah. So whatever. Any one of us can do. We'll just help out and just try our best to, you know, right. run the place. Right. And and uh, the who who are the owners of Brolab? It, wait wait a minute. First of all, can you share all this information, or is it something like so uh, top secret? Uh, I think I can. It's just Julian. Just Julian. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. And and uh, how many coaches do you guys have? So far, it's just the three of us. Just yeah, three coaches. Yeah. Okay. Julian. So Julian also helps out in the coaching. Of course. Yeah. Where does he find the time? Um, when he can, he comes. Mm-hmm. Most evening, he's actually at the gym, mm-hmm. but he tries to, you know, let Dunyu and I coach more of the classes instead because he's got to run the business as well. Okay. Yeah. How many classes do you have in a day? Five. How many in the morning? How many in the afternoon? Two in the morning, three in the evening. Uh, and uh, how do you how do you guys split? You take the morning, and Dunyu takes the uh, evening, or uh, how does it work? So now both of us like we're. 
in the in the gym, mm. like for for the morning sessions and for the evening sessions. So we swap swap lah. Like if oh, you, yeah. So if you take the first class, I'll take the second class. So in between, you're here lah. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm yeah. around running errands, spending time with family, doing anything I That's like. That's a good life, right? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes, it you is. You would say, yeah. Yeah, trust yeah. me, it is. Yeah, you've Especially, got a lot of work-life balance. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it probably closed. Uh, you probably close at what ten, eleven, and then you reopen at five or something like that. Yeah, we close by nine thirty ish. Yeah, and then we reopen. Usually we're there earlier because we're working out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how how early do you get in? Um, depends on what I do in the day. So if I've got nothing else to do in the day, mm-hmm. I'll probably go in by. Four four thirty, get an hour's workout in, shower, and Sorry, then start teaching classes. I was distracted by my machine here. <laughs> <laughs> What time did you say you get you got About in? About four four thirty. In the morning. No no afternoon for the evening session. No for the morning class. For the morning we reach um, about half an hour before the first class starts. Which so is so six o'clock. So first class starts at six or six thirty. Six thirty. And is, are there anyone? <laughs> yeah yeah the morning classes they're quite popular. Really. Yeah. Like how many? People come in to work out before they go to work, and then they go to work, and then because they've got more. Some some people feel like they have got more control of the mornings mm-hmm. because their job requires them to stay back OT sometimes. Right. You know, so once they stay back OT, then then they're like, oh no, now I can't go to the gym. So that's oh. why they come in the morning. So. Like how many people uh, in the morning class? Um, the biggest we've had so far, I think, was eight in the first class. The mm-hmm. the six mm-hmm. thirty. Mm-hmm. The six thirty is more popular actually. I actually I st- I still can't believe it because <laughs> one wake up early in the morning and th- those people who come are they from the surrounding area or w- most of them live around like Damansara Subang area. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's yeah. quite far. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, huh? so I really honestly like really salute people who actually work out really early in the morning. Right, I know your neighbor CrossFit Palawan. Mm-hmm. They have really really good morning classes, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. From the pictures that I've seen, like wow, we're yeah. not talking about twenty, twenty-five people. Yeah, so there's actually a good amount of people who actually wake up really early to work out. We just never really knew about that. Yeah. Yeah. And and how has the reception been since you guys opened? Um, walk-ins are not as great. One because of the location. Right. But we've been getting a lot of traction from social media, from you know word of mouth, mm-hmm. and yeah, people really they spread the word lah. Like if they really like it, they really like talk talk about it. They right. encourage people to come in and try. You know. And how many members do you have now? Um, how many members do I have? Not too sure actually. <laughs> enough? Not enough? <laughs> Probably enough, but we can get in more. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how many how many people can you fit in in a class? Uh, for now, our capacity is fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, but we might increase the capacity up to twenty. So you can you can go up up until twenty. Yes. I mean, that's a big space, right? Yeah. Is twenty twenty is. is the is is the limit or is is, uh, or can you just stretch it more? Um, I guess for now it's the limit to maintain high quality. Mm. Yeah. Although there's two coaches inside, but we still want to try and maintain like, you know, quality movements. Right. We want to make sure that. No, we're able to give attention to like all of the members in the class when they come, even though if even if it's like a big class or mm. if it's a small class. But you guys are still doing uh, what types of workouts, right? Yes, definitely. Right. So that's the bulk of the workout, actually. Okay. Yeah, like think of it as like a five five course meal. Right. Right. You start off with your appetizer, and then the entrees, and then the main dish. Right. And then the desserts, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And and that's one session, one one what yes. session, right? Yeah, correct. And what are the ages um, of your customers? Like, what do they range from? Um, Mid twenties, early twenties, all the way up to forties. That's good. Yeah, we've got we've got some a, li- a little bit older, like fifty-ish, mm. close to sixty as well. Do you guys separate them out, <laughs> the old folks and the Not young really. ones? Not really. So no? we've got like some of the older folks. Like we've had this one parent come in once, and then she joined. She joined the normal class. Right. Yeah. We just scale it down a little bit. Yeah. More, yeah. I mean, like you mentioned that you work with kids, and yeah. I think you also mentioned offline that um, you guys. Uh, can I say it? You go. You're gonna work with kids uh, as well, right? Yep. Yep. 
we've got plans to do. If you have a, a class for kids, why don't you have class for old folks? Oh, we <laughs> like are actually masters. planning for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, hopefully. Hmm. That's good though. I mean, we don't have a lot of those, right? I mean, yeah. I, I would assume like uh, somebody like my age mm -hmm. or older mm -hmm. and who, who has not um, done any types of workout. Yeah. It will be very intimidating. Yes, correct. Yeah. So, like, even for them to just step into the gym, right? It's yeah. like, no, I'm too old for this. They feel yeah. like they're, they're too old. They should be doing Tai Chi. They should yeah. be just walking. But I watched somewhere, and I really believe that it's true, that the older you get, mm -hmm. the more strength training you should, you know, engage in. Because as you age, your muscles deteriorate. Right, that's yeah. true. So in order for you to maintain, like, you know, lifestyle, in order for you to continue to like you know walk long distance, spend time with your with your kids or grandkids even, you have to engage in some form of strength activity. Yep. Yeah. So it's really really important. Like that's what I feel as well. Yeah. And um, what what else is Brola up to today uh, nowadays? Mm, I guess for now we've got plans for kids coming in, mm -hmm. um, because I really love kids honestly, like. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like kids. Just joking. Um, an hour a week, that kind. Mm -hmm. Nothing more than that, because after a while, you know, like. Yeah, you say you like kids now. Yeah. You wait, but that's because they're not my kids. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Exactly. They're right. they're adorable. They're cute. Now, how old are we talking about? I mean, who are you catering to? Um. Well, as a parent, I would ask you, would you send your three-year-old to a gym? Probably not. I used to until I got too tired of sending them. Okay. And it cost money. As in like a gym, like an adult's gym with all the equipment and stuff. I it's would. It's a little bit intimidating my, for No. Me. My kids love this place. Okay. Like um, every time if I want to come here over the weekend mm -hmm. and sometimes they just want to come, you know, but they're just too noisy. <laughs> right? And, and they will... They will run, they will yeah, climb, they will yeah, jump, they yeah. will do all sort of stuff. Yeah. Which, you know, as a parent, you, you kind of worry a little yes, bit, correct. right? Because um, they have no self-control. Yeah, because they're, they're explorers. They're little yeah. explorers. Yeah. yeah, so probably towards the slightly older kids. Um, maybe eight and above, seven, eight and above. Right. Yeah, only because like the younger kids, they, like I said, they're explorers. Right. It's not as safe. You know, parents might not feel as safe to mm. send their kids over to like an adult's gym with weights and all. What yeah. if like the weights drop on your feet? Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, those kind of I things. I think that's so a genuine concern for yeah. any parents. Yeah. But uh, I would say that you know, like uh, my I have a how old is she now? <laughs> she's thirteen. She's going to four, <laughs> she's th she's turning fourteen next year, right? And uh, she has uh, asked me a few times whether or not she can come here and train. You know, Papa, I know how to yeah, train. You know, yeah. I know how to do this. I say, oh, you say you don't know anything, right? No, I know. I, I learned at school. No, you didn't learn anything <laughs> at school. You know, but I, I would send her uh, to a class like that because mm -hmm. I think physically um, and mentally they are more aware yes, and definitely. more ready yep. to to do all this kind of. And uh, they're able to stuff. to understand instructions better yeah. as well. Yeah. So I think I think uh, for if if you if I were to send my six year old, I, I don't know what what you would do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, they have so much energy, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to control that. Uh, it's it's very tiring, uh, whether or not you're their parent uh, parent or not, <laughs> right? It's very it's not it's not easy, right? But I love my kids. I <laughs> <laughs> love my kids. Disclaimer. Yeah. Um, also, I I noticed on your uh, in the Brolabs uh, Instagram that mm -hmm. you guys also do this um, some type of workout in uh, MBSG. Yeah, the Padang. community community events. Yeah. yeah. So we're planning to have like community runs like every week. I mean, sorry, every month. Yeah, like once a month or once every two months. At this MBSG. Yes. Stadium. For now, yes, MBSG. Um. Oh, sorry, you say running. Yes. It's all running. No, it's not fully running. Okay. So the workouts that incorporate running. Okay. Yes. Mm. Um, we understand that there's a lot of people who do not like running at all. Yeah. But yeah. I love sprinting though. Yeah, sprinting is different. Yeah. Um, a lot of people find long distance running very difficult. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't blame them though. Mm. Because one, it's boring. You're just going around and around and around and around the track. Preaching to the choir. Yeah. Yeah. So by, inst um, by incorporating some workouts, right, it actually spices up the runs a little bit more. What sort of workout? 
Um, body weight workouts like squats, push ah, ups, okay. planks. You know, it spices up the runs. Right. It feels like they're not running to nowhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then in a way, I guess it's like it builds a community as well. Right. Like people don't feel so left out. It's like a small Spartan race, lah. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, run minus da, 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 all the obstacles. Da, da. Yeah, and then the <laughs> obstacle will be your body weight uh, workouts. You know, so it makes it fun. It's not monotonous, right? Yes, correct. So because yeah. I, I honestly don't understand those people who do triathlon or do the, do the uh, ultra marathon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it must take a, a quite a f- um, physical toll on on anyone, right? I guess they enjoy it. So how do you enjoy running for 100 km? How do you enjoy that? I, don't, <laughs> I really don't understand that. I'm so sorry, guys. Maybe you guys should come on to the podcast yeah. and explain to yeah. us. You know, yeah. But but apart from that, what else uh, is Brolab uh, doing these days? Um, or is that is that about it? That's about it for now. And I I assume the reception so far has been really good, because I can see a lot of um, faces. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, joining in your class, in your classes, and also your yep. um, weekly or monthly, you mm-hmm. know, running. Monthly runs, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I said, crop brings crop. Yeah, yeah. When people love something, they really, they really talk about it, and they really say good things about it. Right. Yeah. So, um, let me ask you this: um, uh, where where do you see Brolab in the next, you know, couple of years? Do you guys ever think? Years. You guys ever think that that far ahead? Um, hmm, that's a tricky question. That is a tricky question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something to really think about, but yeah. hopefully, maybe one or two more branches in the next few years to come. Right. Yeah, and definitely, you know, like putting it out there that you know, it doesn't matter what age you are. Mm-hmm. You know, it's never ever too late to start. Correct. I yeah. agree. Yep. So, yeah, move good. What about Live yourself, good. though? Myself. I'm going to put you on spot like hmm. I do some of the guests. Right. What is the future for Clarissa My future and Matt? Plans. And Matt. <laughs> I guess I'm, not, I'm not too sure yeah. about that. And putting pressure on Matt. <laughs> and he's not even here. He will hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for myself, I guess being somebody who's able to Not an easy question, right? Yeah, it's really difficult. Yeah, mm. I, you, you know, I, I'm not going to hold you against uh, for it. You know, you know why? We get this question whenever you work in a corporate. Yeah. Especially when they want to decide uh, where they want to rate you. Yeah, and they then which put, position they want you put you. Yeah. So basically, they ask you like, where do you see yourself in two or three years? It's not an easy question. If yeah. somebody were to have uh, an answer for it, my first reaction would be a, a bit doubtful, right? Because nobody ever thinks about this, you know. Yeah, you can plan ahead, but yeah. to get there, like it's, that, that's a different story. But most people don't actually put some thought into where they're gonna be, lah. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just playing with you. It's you know? okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think uh, we are not only running out of uh, camera battery, we are also running out of uh, SD card size. This is the first time. I should. I need really a sponsor good. for uh, um, micro SD card. Uh, anybody wants to sponsor, please uh, contact me. Uh, you can find all the descriptions below. <laughs> and anyway, Clarissa, if you have any last words you want to say uh, to our uh, fans out there, our fans, yeah, yeah, drop by Bro Lab. You know, feel free to come in, try out a class, see how you like it, give us some feedback, and yep. yeah. Yeah, so I'll I'll put all the uh, their links uh, and descriptions in uh, the descriptions below. Uh, do check them out, and uh, thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me, Asmir. Yeah, um, hopefully Julian can come and you can come next time. No yep. problem. And hopefully you'll drop by Brolap once in a while, just like you know. Just to see lah. <laughs> yeah, why not try the class <laughs> since you're already there? <laughs> uh, let me do some weight first, and then uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> Okay, um, before we, we, we go, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, please listen uh, to our Spotify as well. We're available there. Uh, you, for, you, for, you, for, for all the sponsors out there, we really need your sponsorship. Uh, uh, with that, uh, we'll see you next week, inshallah. Ciao. Bye. Bye. See you.